the fuck is this? Iron Duin. Looks like Artus. Sylvanas. Where is her body? Fucking hell. Guys, this is weird. Maybe I should make a video about it. But before that, I have to say one thing. Fuck this. Time of the Tin Folk Crusade is now. Hello, 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 guys. Chaos Lance and his big nose and his sweet tinfoil helmet, as you can see. Freshly made, very effective and very elegant. Hello, you, and today I would like to encourage you to join me on the tinfoil crusade where I will take a look on a few minor lore questions which are slightly unanswered or opened or simply tinfoil shit. And try to find some answer and if I picked my boss together and you are a Christy Golden watching this, then I would like to have them answered. So those are minor details, but these minor details make the world think more. So ladies and gentlemen, join me and let's have some fun. Like many of you, I know firsthand. The pain of loss. My father, Prince Arthas Menefil, gave his life to save his people. Let's start with the big tinfoil shit. The ancient question Is Anduin Wren actually son of Arthas Menefil? Now the dramatic pause is probably too long and I will cut it out, but let's take a look on this ageless meme shit question. I would rule out the possibility that he is the son of Jaina and Jaina and Arthas. He is only Arthas' son. Arthas and Tiffin, his parents. Now of course you are asking why the fuck chaos you are insane, there is no fucking way when it would happen, how it would happen and why would they do this? Well. Why would they do this? <laughs> because why fucking not? Yeah. And because it's a fury, and I have my tinfoil hat, I look like I'm insane. So I can actually... Um, technical difficulties. So now I can actually comprehend the insane crazy master plan behind this. Okay. Hear me out. I think that right now you would like to have the question why would they do this answered. Well, of course, because the factor why not, they could add another sort of Game of Thrones element in the World of Warcraft, which they are probably pretty much doing. So it would put an interesting twist in that and also, it would depend on the fact that if Varian knew about that, because it could retrospectively add so much worth to Varian's character. You know, there is something when like you have to take care of your kid, but then there is another thing when you have to take care of a, a kid which was created by your best friend with your wife at one night at the only chance they could possibly have. You know, <laughs> if Varian knew about Anduin not being his son, Varian was fucking golden. If he didn't, well, nothing would change. Unless, of course, they would like to play with this twist later on. Because if really Arthas Menefil is Anduin's father, it could have two possible playouts. Sylvanas could be Anduin's 
Melganis, in quotes. She could lure him into the dark place where he would have to commit the crazy atrocity and the light would abandon him and maybe he would call out the void. And who knows? But simply, she would, like Silveras would, or could do some crazy shit with Benduin. Then, of course, we have the other possibility that Anduin would be so scared of becoming his true father if he had found out. He would be scared to do the same bad things as he did. He would eventually do them. Lose the like light would abandon him. Maybe he would become the next Lich King. 8.3 could be a return of Bolvar for Dragon. Like it would start with that happy marriage of Anduin and Thalia and Bolvar would just come in like <laughs> Hello, I've heard you are about to marry my sweet daughter. You don't need the blessing of your godfather and her father, man to <laughs> And in that case, like, Bolvar could reveal that Anduin is actually Arthas' son, because don't forget that Bolvar has the memories of Arthas and Nerzul. But that's for another video. So I think that they could really, really play with that. Know that I am not saying that Anduin is son of Arthas and Jaina, because there would not be any point how that would play out. Like I think that like Terenas and Antonidas and Paul and Kalia and Varian, they would know that. And I don't think that given the scenes from Rise of the Lich King from the Atlas novel that they would like cover it up that well. Speaking of Rise of the Lich King, I also want to answer one question, and that's the question when it could happen. In this spoken book, there is one moment when Arthas is in a storm wind, Varian is there, Jaina is there, Tiffin is there. It was the moment when Arthas became the paladin when he was officially accepted into the Order of the Silver Hand. Why is this important? Because at the end of this night, they drank. They drank a lot. Now there are two possibilities. First of all, it would be big quality porn plot. When they basically swapped wives. Like, Varian fucked Jaina and Arthas fucked Tiffin. Or, don't forget that in that time, Tiffin was still kind of pissed on Varian, like she didn't like him. So maybe she just cheated on him. With Arthas. It's possible. But now let's move on to the other question. When I was certain I was scaring, I confined in Mother. Oh, she was furious with me. But... She could tell by my face that this was a true love and I assured her my child would be legitimate. Father was too caught up in Arthas to make much objection when my mother and I went on long rest to more the remote parts of the kingdom. Kalia's hand ceased to move on her abdomen and both hands curled into fists. I got to hold my beautiful little girl and tend to her for a few weeks before it was decided that my husband would raise her away from Lord Aron and ignorant of her birthright. Mother promised that when the time was right, when Arthas had finally married and produced an heir, we could acknowledge my daughter and perhaps elevate my husband to a nobleman's status so her name would be unsolid. That day never came, but Scourge did. I don't remember much of the time. I remember lying in the ditch while the Scourge passed above me. I believe to this day that it was thanks to the light that they never found me. I made my way to South Shore where my husband and child had been hidden away. We all three wept when we were reunited, but it was not to last. You know, as I was talking about the descendants of Menethil's family, there is one other thing. As you could hear right now, Kaelia Menethil had a daughter with a footman of Lordaeron. Suddenly, um, be a face ladies and gentlemen. Daughter of a Lord of the Rounds footman popped up in Borales. Her name is Thalia for Dragon. 
First of all, listen to how these two names sound. Talia, Kalia. Pretty close, don't you think? So, is there any possibility that Kalia Menefil actually is Kalia for Dragon because they were married or they had the wedding and it was simply kept under anything? Who knows? That's what I ask. I don't have any theory solidly backing this up. Only maybe I found out something that would go against it because later on Kalia said this. No one recognized me. Everyone assumed I was dead. We were happy for a time. And then came the blight. We ran. I wasn't about to leave my family again. But in the crowd we were separated. I stood in the middle of the street, screaming for them. Someone took pity on me, pulling me onto his horse and galloping past the limits of the town barely in time. There was a cluster of refugees in the forest. So many of us waited, desperate for a word of our loved ones. Sometimes prayers were answered and there were reunions that were. I prayed for my family too, would be spared, but I never saw them again. She lived in the South Shore until the Blight. That's the problem. The Blight came in in Cataclysm. Volva for Dragon in the times of Cataclysm was already the Lich King. Talia back in the times of Cataclysm was already in Boralus. Like, if she was born in the times of Warcraft 3 and she is in Boralus since she was young, Back in Cataclysm, she would be about 12, 13 years old. She would remember her parents. She would remember them pretty well. So it's possibly that it's not the case. But maybe this is just to throw us off. Who knows? Again, if you are Christy Golden watching this, this is one of the questions that I really want answered. Okay? I can already hear you in my tinfoil covered ears. Chaos, what the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with that? Because she screams for the horde or because she took a, that fucking siege tower or what the fuck, man? They were fucking insane. Yes, I am fucking insane, but because I'm insane, I see one thing many people overlooked. Where is Ronas' body? What? You don't know what I'm talking about? Learn your lore, guys. I have brought the rice and the Lich King many times today. Let me bring it one more time. Sylvanas possessed her body. Her corporal form, we can see. That's her possessed body. When she goes into full Banshee, her body should drop down. Come on! That's plot hole! Or is it a retcon? Or is it something we have not been told yet? Was this done by her being resurrected by Valkyr? This is actually the question why I even wanted to make this video in the first place. So, do you know an explanation that I've missed? Or... What? I, I, my current running theory is that this was done by the Valkyr. That the Valkyr basically, as they raised her, they connected her, her spirit and body into some sort of hybrid state and she can instantly transform into Banshee. So, if you have liked this video and my dog in the background here, say hello to my little friend, then give this video a like. If you dislike this, of course, then give it a dislike. If you know any answer on any of my questions, of course, outside of the first one, because that's just a wild info shit, then use the conversation mode to tell me the answer. Answer the questions. And of course, if you are Christy Golden watching this, then thank you for watching. And I hope you at least that last question. Just
Silver and Silver. Please. Red Beast. Something official, something canon. Please. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see something else, something new that I may put out, and something I hope also in the better part of the last info I had, because damn it. If only you knew how my hair stink right now. Having this up for like a three or four hours that I was doing recordings and researches and all this shit. Shit, that was insane. But, yeah, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, be happy. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, I call myself Chaos Lands. This is my big nose. This is my different hat. Here was my rock. And I will see you somewhere in the future. Bye.